We're going to take a look at an example here of finding equilibrium concentrations and the questions are going to appear on the screen. But basically we have this reaction and we have some known concentrations here that we're starting with. We want to know the final concentrations or the equilibrium concentrations. So what do we do? Well, we have to set up an ice table. So we'll go I here. This will be our I line for the known concentrations. Then we'll have a C line and an E line. Okay. To find the C line, we need Q. And so that's why I wrote Q on the board. Q is, remember, products over the reactants, and these little zeros represent the starting conditions. Or Q is calculated from the I line. So let's do that with what we got. Q is a sulfate concentration, which is 0 0.060, times the H3O plus concentration, which is 0 0.020, divided by the uh, bisulfate concentration of 0 0.50. Okay? We find this, and I calculated Q to be 0 0.0024. So if Q is 0 0.0024, you can see that Q is less than K. So in this case, it has to shift to the right. And so we're going to use all this to okay, form in our C case, line. we're going to shift to the right. So let's do that. That means we're going to have a minus there and plus, plus here on the product side. How much is it going to shift? Well, x amount, some unknown amount. That's what we're trying to figure out, how much it's going to shift. You might be wondering, why don't I have anything here in the water category? Well, that's because it's a liquid. And so practically, we're going to ignore it uh, because Technically, the liquid activities don't come into play in these sort of calculations. The E line is just the sum of the I and the C lines. So I'm just going to literally add those two lines together um, to get this third line here. All right, and now I've completed my ice table. This is the first step in my calculation. The second thing that I always go to is the equilibrium expression. So let's write that down. It looks really similar to Q. I'm going to write it way over here on the left-hand side. So K is going to equal products. That's the sulfate and the H3O plus, all divided by the bisulfate concentration. Okay. There's the K expression. Now I want to plug in to this uh, all my numbers. So K is given at 0 0.012. And then all these concentrations right here are all from the E line. So remember, the E line gives K, where the, the C line. Second step is writing the equilibrium expression. My last step is to be solving for X to find what I want. When I find X, I'm going to put it into these three spaces, and those will be my answers which are the equilibrium concentrations for those uh, three components in solution. So you would need to be able to do the quadratic formula in this case. Uh, I'm going to write down the answer to the quadratic formula in this case uh, for this problem or whatever method you actually wanted to use to solve. You should try at home to make sure that you know is if you're going to use a quadratic formula, you need to simplify this into this sort of expression, ax squared plus bx plus c. We know a and b and c. And you can use the quadratic formula, you get two answers. That's normal, you always get two answers from the quadratic. Make sure you know how to solve for that. And then when we take a look at these two, we want to see which one doesn't make sense. Well, if you take a look at the negative one, and you put it in here, it's going to cause you to get some negative concentrations actually right here and here. That's going to be a problem, so that's likely not the answer. And we're going to go with the one that's going to give us all positive concentrations all across the board. That'll be the chemically correct answer. All right, so if I plug in accordingly, I'm going to put X into each one of these. And you can see how I did that in each case with the same X. And that will lead me to my final end. Here, uh, we get 0.046 molar for the bisulfate, we have 0.097 for the sulfate, and then for the H3O plus we have 0.057. Notice that I added in the molarity units back in. You don't see it when you do the calculation uh, because we're behind the scenes working with activities, though practically we're 
I'm just doing it as we do it and adding in the molarity on the back end because we're knowing we're solving for a concentration. And there we go. There's a typical ice table. Cool thing about this problem that you'll see us discuss in class. We're going to see this kind of question actually in the acid-base chapter. And this kind of method of solving is going to be the same method of solving that we're doing here that we're using in the next chapter. So actually the concepts are not going to change from chapter to chapter. We're just going to apply the same concepts to a couple different scenarios.